have is Andre uh, Jabelski uh, from, and this is on New Frontiers of Genome Assembly with SPADES 3.1. Hello, my name is Andre, and today I'm going to talk about our space genome assembler that was developed in St. Petersburg, Russia, in Pavel Perzer lab. So, what is space? We decided to name our assembler after our city, a very beautiful city indeed, try to visit it sometime. Uh, initially, we uh, were trying to design an assembler for single cell data sets that were obtained using multiple displacement amplification. So, the main goal was to deal with highly uneven coverage and chimeric reads. But eventually it turned out that we work well on standard bacterial data set as well. Of course, when we published our papers, uh, we used benchmarks and proved that, of course, we have the best, as everybody do. But there was a separate study called Gage B. Uh, they benchmarked a lot of different assemblies on bacterial data sets, and they ranked uh, Space and Mazurka as two best assemblers. So we hope that study was independent, at least we did not pay them. Recently, uh, the last Christmas, we released uh, the major new version, 3.0. Uh, now we support an unlimited number of paired and mate pair and single read, li single read libraries. We also support ion torrent reads, and we turned uh, space into hybrid assembler, so we can use PugBio and other long read technologies. And the last major addition was a deep space. It's a model for highly polymorphic, polymorphic deployed genomes. Okay, let's talk a bit about these features. How do we perform a hybrid assembly? To perform hybrid assembly, you first need uh, some short high quality reads like Illumina or Ion Torrent. We construct a De Bruyne graph and simplify it uh, to construct an assembly graph. And then we align all other reads like pack by mate pairs uh, to this graph and feed these alignments into a universal repeat resolving algorithm, uh, which actually does not care about the source of data. It just uses the alignments and resolves repeats and performs scaffolding. As to deep space, uh, we wanted to move from just bacterial genomes to some larger genomes, for example, like fungi and plants with that have uh, polymorphism rates up to 20% sometimes. If you use, use standard alg algorithms, you will uh, get probably two sets of contexts uh, for each haplom, and the assembly will be very fragmented. But deep space constructs, constructs consensus uh, contexts uh, with high end 50 and longer contexts, which are much easier for analysis. As to ion torrent, uh, uh, the main uh, problem was in indel errors. Uh, previously, we used bias hammer, which was able to correct only substitution errors, so it was possible to work only with illuminaries. And uh, as everybody uh, does, we uh, worked with k-mers. To work with uh, torrent data with uh, a lot that has a lot of indels and homopolymer problems. We collapsed all homopolymers into a single nucleotide and then corrected the reads. So Einhammer is able to correct indel subset, and substitution errors, and it also knows about undercall and overcall issue. We benchmarked uh, Einhammer on several data sets, and of course, we also show that we do well. Um, a red line corresponds to the uh, error rate depending on read position for uncorrected reads. Green line is a pipeline where we trim uncorrected ends, and blue line corresponds to the pipeline where we do not trim these ends. The, the left plot corresponds to inserts and in, indel errors, and this one are substitution errors. And as you see, we reduce error rate five to eight times on average. About a month ago, we released a new version of Spades, and the main addition was possibility to assemble mate pair only data sets with no paired end data. data. We also improved scaffolding and repeat resolution, uh, improved our performance, and made a better iron torrent pipeline. And we also integrated with some cloud services. 
And of course, we are available as open source assemblers since we, I'm talking here. Uh, and also we are available as pre-built binaries for Linux and Mac OS. The first uh, cloud service was Illumina Base Space. We didn't integrate just Space, we also integrated Quast tool. It's our own tool for assessing uh, assembly quality. So if you want to, not just to make the Nova assembly, but you also want to benchmark some data sets, you can run both Spades and probably other assemblies and then uh, compare them using Quast. So uh, remembering the title stocks, you're not just using the black box, you're just trying to analyze what you get out. And, but of course it's very easy to use. If you try it base space, you just select uh, a tool, select a sample, and here you go. The thing that all biologists have been dreaming about, a single push button solution. And since we support Iron Torrent, we also integrate it into Torrent Server. And of course we integrated Space and Quast so the, pipe, the pipelines will be pretty similar. And we also uh, put space into Dana Nexus and Galaxy tool. Uh, talking about performance, since we move from bacterial data sets to some larger genomes, for example, fungal assembly, uh, we also constantly work on the performance. For example, uh, we improved bias hammer. So previously it was running about 90 hours on 100 megabase deployed genome, now it's only 16 hours, so the improvement is pretty obvious. And of course we work on other parts of our assembler, the um, repeater resolution model previously was working uh, quite a long time, especially uh, with mate pair libraries, but as you see here we made quite an improvements on that. And talking about the main feature of the previous release is uh, Nextera mate pair libraries. Illumina released the protocol that allows uh, to obtain high quality mate pair libraries with rather uniform coverage and uh, pretty nice insert side distribution. If we look at uh, usual mate pairs, uh, they have a pretty nasty distribution because uh, they have a lot of uh, erroneous and chimeric read pairs with improper orientation. Usually they call it pad end part and only a few reads have a proper orientation. And if we look at Nextera mate pairs, they usually look like just long pad and reads. We try to assemble them using spades and velvet, as Illumina recommends, and velvet has better assembly. You may be surprised why I'm showing this table to you, because it's quite unlikely. But uh, when I talk to biologists, they usually say, yes, we want high and 50 longer context, but this is not the only issue. Uh, when you benchmark assemblers, you better look at the uh, correctness of the context. Uh, so we use Quas to look at mm, breakpoints between context and the reference genome. We call misassemblies. So if you look at this table, you see that Velvet generates six and three misassemblies depending on camera size. And space generates error-free assembly. And similar to longest contact in a N50, we usually look at corrected N50. And not the longest contact, but the largest alignment to the reference genome. And one more metric is uh, the fraction of the genome recovered. So what's the message here is actually now it's possible to assemble nearly complete bacterial genomes from short reads. And you get quality similar to PugBio. So if you are thinking of bacterial genome assembly, don't switch to PugBio too quickly. Okay, I guess this is it. I want to thank Spades team and our heads, Alla Lapidus and Paolo Pesner. And any questions, please? Yes, please. Um, about your use of base space and DNA Nexus, those commercial services, are they, uh, are you getting a cut from the payments that they receive from their users? Are you using this for funding? Uh, no. Uh, 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 everything is uh, free. You just pay for Amazon time, I guess, and for mm, for computing. And uh, space is free, and I think it always will be. Good. Hey, so um, I uh, I love spades. We, you. we recommend it to, to everybody, uh, but only for small genomes. So far, yes, we are um, constantly trying to make it. Yeah. So the big problem isn't 
that it probably works fine on big genomes, but um, it breaks the memory. Yes. All uh, of the memory. Weird. All of the memory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, help. <laughs> yes. Um, I, as far as I remember, like two years ago, we had a task list, and uh, there was a huge task to make space possible to assemble larger genomes. Unfortunately, this uh, point remains, remains in our task list. We're constantly improving, so now you can assemble fungal genomes, but this is not the end. Of course, you want mammalian genomes, insects, and plants. Uh, maybe the problem is that uh, some new ideas come, like deployed genomes or stuff like that, and we uh, always say that, yes, we want to improve the performance, but we constantly switch to some research problems. Any other, uh, any other questions? So I'm, I, I came back from an uh, arthropod genomics uh, symposium where they're very interested. They have a huge problem with uh, genomes that are heterozygous um, or polyploid. That was a planned genome conference I was also at, and so they have major problems with polyploid um, uh, genome assemblies. Um, I think this goes back to Titus's point of they generate tons of data that they just kind of dump on you and say, here, solve my problem. Um, so do you envision this, you know, going in that direction, trying to uh, address some of these major issues with genome assemblies, or I mean, it seems like the obviously the the, the, the current dip dip space yes. is is to, is made to address the the heterozygosity issues yes. and and so yeah. On. So uh, I'm not sure they're planning to make it polyplo about polyploid genomes, yeah. but uh, as far as I know, uh, the feedback about deep space and 